Now this is one of the most simple flies to tie and uses a very small amount of materials. Just some fine black thread, silver wire, a curved hook like these barbless emergers from Risen, which I'll actually be tying in size 14 for you, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing better. However, I commonly tie these down to size 24, in hooks like these Firehole Outdoors, and even smaller like these size 30, when trout are really picky, which I'll actually tie for you in this size later in this video. And you also need a really fine type dubbing like this fine and dry in black. Start by placing your hook securely in your vise. Then start your thread with an eye length space behind the eye of the hook and make a couple wraps back to the hook point. Now with your wire on a bobbin holder, attach the wire on the side of the hook with two wraps. And then pull the wire through the thread to get it to the right length, starting out to where you started your thread. Now if you pull too much, just start over again trying to get it right on the side of the hook and starting where you started your thread. Now make tight touching wraps back up towards the eye, securing the wire tightly. Now go back down the hook quite a ways down the bend with touching wraps covering the wire and hook shank. Also make sure the wire has no sharp bends to it and that it evenly stays on the side of the hook. When happy with the abdomen length, then twist your thread counterclockwise to uncord it and make the thread flat. That is, if your thread can do that. Then wrap back up the hook shank with touching wraps, trying to make the abdomen as smooth as possible. Now, if you have a rotary vise, this is much quicker, but you can wrap the wire around without it. Basically, try to make the wrapping as even as possible up the hook shank. Once you reach where you started your thread, then you're done wrapping the wire. Now, if you use the rotary, you wrapped a few wraps of thread onto the head. So unwrap it, and then capture the wire with three to four tight wraps. Now to really secure the wire tightly, pull it rearward and wrap over it going the other direction a few times as well. Now you can helicopter the wire off clean. And don't worry that the head looks really messy right now. We'll fix it with the dubbing ball. For a larger fly like this one, you can add a fair amount of dubbing, but obviously you want to use much less with a smaller fly. Dub on a rather thin noodle, and make a dubbing ball right behind the eye of the hook. As you can see, there are red and chartreuse fibers with this black dubbing. Fine and Dry adds these, and they are UV reactive, so it really helps make this fly more attractive to trout. Once you make the dubbing ball, then bring your thread forward right behind the eye, and stroke all the fibers rearward and make one last wrap behind the eye. Now it's difficult to get head cement on this fly without soaking the dubbing ball with it, so I paint a little onto my thread and whip finish that into the fly. And there we go, a black beauty. And if you were thinking this sure looks like a zebra midge, then you'd be right. Basically, it is a zebra midge without the bead head. The nice thing about this fly is that it's simple enough to be tied on the smallest of sizes. Here I'm going to demonstrate tying it on a size 30 hook, which is the smallest hook I own. Now there's a few differences to this, and for one, a brassy sized wire is thicker than the wire gauge of the hook. So I'm going to use an extra small ultra wire. And I will also be using a finer thread, here the Vivas 16i. Now be careful taking the hooks out of the package. They're like grains of sand and can be lost in your carpet if you drop one. Somehow, some way, get the hook secured in your vise. And I have seen people use hackle pliers for this. Then we're going to tie it in the same way as a size 14. However, we will change one thing. When attaching the wire, don't go back up towards the eye while securing it. Adding extra taper is not needed on such a small fly. Now I am sorry, but I had to crop in so tight where the fly could not stay in the shot while I was rotating the vise. And I couldn't seem to film this as well as my other flies, but it is what it is when you're tying so small. One other thing that is different is the amount of dubbing. With something so small, you really want almost nothing. In fact, right here is too much. Here we go, that's perfect. Oh, and don't whip finish the cement into the fly, but after painting it on, just wrap it onto the head and then whip finish over that. Believe me, it's much easier that way. If you whip finish over the eye, just use your fingernails to pinch the whip finish and it should set back behind the eye. Well, there we go, a midge pupa that is no larger than a grain of sand. Seriously, super small. 
You might be asking why fish something that small. Well, there are some fisheries where the midge pupas are very tiny, and the fish are really picky on the size of fly. The San Juan comes to mind, and many other western tailwaters are the same way. The smaller the fly, the more strikes you will get. Of course, at that point it's tough to bring in the larger fish if you get one hook, so it's a give and take. But there are days where having a fly this small could make or break your day. Anyway, go check out Risen Fly. They have some really high quality hooks, like the ones I was using today at a great price. Also, they have great quality rods, reels, and other gear as well. And use my discount code for additional discount at checkout. It's McFly. Easy enough to remember, right? Well, here are the two flies I tied today. Sure is a vast difference between the sizes, right? And it is amazing how the size 14 looks huge against the size 30. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.